Hi guys, I hope you're well. And welcome back to Fit Education's Virtual Classroom. In today's micro teach session, we are going to follow on from yesterday's session where we looked at optimum postural alignment. We are going to concentrate today on all of the different postural deviations. As ever, if you find value in our content, we'd appreciate if you could like, comment and share and help us spread the word of what we do. So let's have a look at some common postural deviations now. A person's posture can deviate from an optimal spinal alignment for a number of reasons, such as sustained postures when gaming or desk working, habitual exercise or sports imbalances, age-related conditions such as osteoporosis, injuries in congenital or genetic conditions such as cerebral palsy. Postural abnormalities increases both the stress on the spine and surrounding soft tissue structures while decreasing the efficiency of movement. The image shows the visual difference between optimum posture and some common postural deviations in both the anterior posterior and the lateral viewpoints, including scoliosis, hyperkyphosis and hyperlordosis. We'll take a look at these three deviations in more detail in the following slides. So the first postural deviation we'll now look at is scoliosis. Now scoliosis is a postural deviation typically indicated by the lateral curvature of the spine greater than 10 degrees. This creates a C or an S shape. There are two primary categories for scoliosis, structural and non-structural. Structural is congenital or genetic and the spinal deviations are within the bone structure itself. Structural scoliosis is not correctable through exercise and it may require surgical intervention for improvement. More typical scoliotic deviations are non-structural forms. Non-structural scoliosis occurs post-injury or from unilateral loading through repetitive activity or poorly balanced resistance training programs. Non-structural scoliosis can be significantly improved with suitable corrective exercise. Overactive muscles become short and tight and these are apparent on the concaved aspect. While the underactive muscles become lengthened and weakened and these are apparent on the convex aspect. And the altad joint mechanics as shown in the image are dependent on the type of abnormality and severity but they typically present uneven shoulders or uneven hips, prominent ribs and typically one shoulder blade appearing more dominant than the other. To improve non-structural scoliosis we need to lengthen the concaved and strengthen the convex musculature. Another typical postural deviation is known as hyperkyphosis or upper cross syndrome. This postural deviation is indicative of a hunched back appearance with rounded shoulders and often an anterior pelvic tilt. Hyperkyphosis typically affects office workers, large breasted women, very tall individuals and habitual gamers. The overactive muscles which become short and tight in hyperkyphotic posture include the upper trapezius, pectoralis major and minor and the latissimus dorsi. The underactive muscles which become lengthened and weakened include the mid and lower trapezius, rhomboids and serratus anterior. All that joint mechanics is shown in the image are increased cervical extension, scapular protraction and elevation with decreased shoulder extension and shoulder external rotation. To improve hyperkyphotic posture, we need to lengthen the pectoral muscles and strengthen the lower trapezius and rhomboid musculature. The final common postural deviation which we will look at is known as hyperlordosis or lower cross syndrome. This is a postural deviation indicative of an excessive curve in the lower back with an anterior pelvic tilt. Hyperlordosis typically affects dancers, gymnasts, prenatal women and obese individuals. The overactive muscles which become short and tight in hyperlordosis include the hip flexor complex, erecti spinae group and latissimus dorsi. While the underactive muscles which become lengthened and weakened include the gluteals, transversus abdominis and the internal obliques. All that joint mechanics is shown in the image or increased hip extension. To improve hyperlordosis, we need to strengthen the abdominal core musculature 
and lengthen the hamstrings and erectospinae groups. We hope that you enjoyed today's content. If you have any questions on what was covered, please leave us a comment below. Or if you'd like to support us in what we do, if you could give us a like, a comment or share, we'd appreciate your support.